So what's going to happen next with these so-called sovereign funds, these huge sovereign wealth funds which are massive amounts of cash that's been accumulated by foreign governments as they've bought American dollars. Why do they buy those dollars? Well, to keep their own exchange rates relatively low, uh, and which in turn made their products relatively cheap um, and kept the dollar relatively strong, which meant that the United States was still able to buy loads of their goods, and so this merry-go-round has continued. Well, it's a toxic merry-go-round. It could not have continued forever. And, of course, eventually, those dollars had to be uh, used in a useful way. And a non-useful way for sovereign wealth funds is to put them all into long-term government bonds um, uh, in the United States. Why? Because the returns are uh, relatively modest. I mean, who on earth, if they were handed a, a fund of, uh, let's say, one or two trillion dollars, would choose to put it all in government bonds? There's not a single financial advisor in the world that would tell an ultra, 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 ultra high net worth individual to invest their money like that. They would all say diversify. And so where would you diversify if you had a one or two trillion dollar fund? And by the way, you probably are going to use that to leverage in some way. So if you were going to buy some property, you might buy it with a mortgage, a bit of a deposit. Uh, you might uh, only, only put in 40% equity, borrow 60%, regard it as a long-term property investment where the, uh, the uh, property rentals uh, on that, uh, say, commercial property may, may finance the mortgage anyway. So in fact, a two trillion dollar fund could well turn out to be a three or four or five or even six trillion dollar fund when it's actually used in the market. But as I say, where is that money going to be used? Well, we're already seeing uh, some indications of the future. For a start, at the, uh, in, in any area of the economy which is cash short is an area which is very attractive for people who got cash to buy. And what are the two areas where we're cash short at the moment? Well, in April 2008, those two areas, without a doubt, were banks, very short of cash because of the problems they got lending to each other, because of the crisis of trust, because they can't even work out what the value is of their own balance sheets, because they don't know the value of the debts that they've got, they don't know the value of the assets they've got. It's been a very troubled period. So because banks are having to rebuild their balance sheets, they are ripe open, and because the bank prices have fallen, in some cases, by 50% or more, then these have been amazing opportunities for, say, Chinese um, sovereign wealth fund investment and so on, Singapore sovereign wealth fund investment, Abu Dhabi, Russian and so on. The other area where I'm convinced we will see movement by sovereign wealth funds in a big way is into the property market. Because what happens is you get this contagion uh, through the subprime crisis. Property prices are unnaturally low right now and possibly have further to fall. Why is that? Because we have a glut of properties on the market which have been recently repossessed by banks uh, that are now being sold to try and realize some of the bank's uh, losses, uh, to cover some of the bank's losses. And, uh, and, and of course, the market sentiment generally has been very badly damaged. And at some point, those property prices will come bouncing back up again. And when they do, those sovereign wealth funds could stand to make a huge investment. So uh, you'll see some plays into the property market. But you'll also see other plays into things, whether it's utilities, whether it's buying ports, uh, whether it's uh, into IT companies, into uh, all kinds of innovative sectors, into, uh, into some of the more traditional construction and uh, manufacturing uh, companies and so on. So it will be very interesting. And we may see an emotional reaction to some of that, as we've seen in the past. But on the other hand, uh, the United States uh, was uh, perfectly relaxed about a huge influx of investment from the Japanese in, uh, in a previous decade. And there's no particular reason to think why uh, the United States may not become uh, relatively relaxed about Chinese investment in the future. They have to. There's no choice. Because if the Chinese are not allowed to use the dollars they have for reasonable investments inside America, then they will be forced to take those dollars outside the American economy altogether. And if they do that, that will mean converting them out of dollars into something else, and that, in turn, could force a revaluation of the dollar downwards. Now, sovereign wealth funds won't want to do that in a large way if they can possibly help it, because the very fact of them removing dollars 
uh, their, their first half trillion dollars they were to take out would devalue uh, the rest of the dollar holdings which they have because it would send the dollar into a downward push. So we can expect quite measured and careful decisions by sovereign wealth funds as they seek to disentangle themselves from dollars. We'll see new wealth from it generated in sovereign wealth funds increasingly being built up in other currencies for obvious reasons, but those existing dollars will be made to work a lot harder.